Golden and Bulolo With whatever we do, Dion is Tafu no love. With whatever we do, Halei the Moon is cool. Nepamne Nepulukula, Nepangi Ragala Gaina, Nepamne Nepul. He will look in no one to bet his soul. He will look in that to Nibet. Hello viewers and listeners, I am Abdullahi J.S. Job, once again with you on Science Lower Basic School, Lesson 4. On our previous lesson, I gave you an assignment to do before we meet once again, and today here we are. The corrections are as follows. The questions were, fill the gap using these words. The words were producer, blood, omnivore, nectar, food, animals, and carnivore. These were the seven words that we were supposed to, you were supposed to fill in these gaps. I hope you have done your homework correctly. Number one, 
the question say reads a crocodile eats does it is a does now from our last lesson what is the food or what does the crocodile feeds on among these producer blood omnivore nectar food animals and carnivore here we say a crocodile eats animals we write animals here it is a what do we say animals that feed on animals only or animals that feed on meat only what is the name given to it among this it is a carnivore so we say it is a carnivore right so the first question reads a crocodile eats animals so therefore it is a carnivore look at your answers and mark your own book number two a mosquito eats does and does in our previous lesson what did we learn from our previous lesson about a mosquito we said a mosquito fee eats what among these a mosquito eats nectar n e c a t a r nectar and what and blood b l o o d so if a mosquito feeds on nectar and blood a nectar which is found on flowers of plants and blood which is found on animals so we therefore say a mosquito feeds both on plants and animals and such animals we say they are called what if that is the case then it is an omnivore we write omnivore o m n i v o r e it is an omnivore good look at yours and compare number 3 a mango tree produces its own first we have to know what a mango tree is what living thing it belongs to a mango tree is a living thing we all know that and we of course know that it is a plant we say a mango tree produces its own let's reflect what we said about plants we said pl all pl plants they produce their own food so mango tree is no exceptional mango tree is a pro is a plant so therefore a mango tree produces its own the answer here is food it produces its own food if that is the case then it is a producer then it is a producer good then it is a producer so we have the corrections here on the board you can compare it with yours and we move ahead now we move to our today's lesson today's lesson is feeding relationship between organisms feeding relationship between organisms between organisms now this feeding relationship that is the relationship between animals and plants in terms of food is what the topic is about it is all what the topic is about how do we relate it says animals and plants depend on each other in many ways and one of the one of the most important way is for food can you all, can you think of any other ways that animals and plants depend on each other yes we have so many of them one of them we said is food one of them we said is food 
The other one is also exchange of gas. We exchange gas. Animals and plants exchange gas. In a sense, I mean animals take in from the air, breathe in from the air oxygen. Animals breathe in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide that animals give out or breathe out is what the plants also take into their system and give out oxygen. So you can see we exchanging. The gas that we are taking in, that's the oxygen, is already given out by the plants. And the carbon dioxide that we are giving out is what the plants need. So that's another one that they, we depend on. Another one we need from the plants is firewood. Another one that we animals need, particularly human beings, we need firewood. We collect firewood every day. Okay? Firewood or charcoal. We pro pro collect it from the plants almost every day. To do what? To cook our food. Another one is timber. Timber. We collect timber from these plants. We, f we, we fell these trees almost every day for timber. The furniture that we have in our classes, most of them are from timber. The furniture that we have in our houses, our sofas, our beds, our cupboards are all from these plants. So, of course, they are also important. We get also from plant seed. In most of our homes, we grow some plants, not only for food, but for seed. That is, during the day when it is hot, we sit under it so that we can exchange this gas. We have cool air. Another one is decoration. Another one is decoration. We, depend, we, we use plants again to decorate our houses. We use plants to decorate our village. We use plants to decorate our town. Right? Even in our schools, we grow this for decoration. Flowers around our classrooms. Another one is habitat. Plants are also habitat for many animals. When I say habitat, I mean home. Plants are habitat for many animals. There are so many animals that live on the plants. The squirrel, the one that climbs up. You have two types of squirrel. You one in the hole and the one that climbs up. You have the parrots. You have the river birds. They all have their homes on, in plants. So therefore, these are some of the things that we see are from plants. He said that earlier in our first topic, in our lesson, previous lesson, that is, plants make their own food from simple substances such as water and minerals that is obtained from the uh, soil, carbon dioxide which is obtained from the air, and sunlight energy which is obtained from the sun. Animals depend on plants and other animals for food. Yes, animals, their food is always plants or both plants and animals. And this relationship is what we call a food chain. The relationship between the animals and the plants in terms of food is what we call food chain. It's what we call food chain. We're going to look at how food chain is and how it goes along. Right. For example... A goat, hyena, and grass. If these organisms live together, how would they survive? You have in a community here, you have a goat, you have grass, and of course you have hyena. These three organisms live in together, and they have to take food. They have to survive. How do you think they would survive? We are going to say the grass 
We said grasses or plants, they make their own food. They don't kill other plants to make their food or animals. Right? So therefore grass, which among these animals, the hyena and the goat, which among them feeds on the grass? We say it is the goat. Now, the goat and the hyena, which one feeds on the other? We say it's the hyena. We say it's the hyena. Also, so you can see here, this grass is eaten by the goat. The goat is also eaten by the hyena. So you can see where the food is coming from and where it is going to. And in this chain is what we call food chain. It is going in a chain form. So that's why we call it food chain. The energy of the food is coming from the grass. We said grass and plants, they, don't, they make their own food. They don't depend on animals or other plants for their food. So therefore, they get their food on their own. So the grass is already getting its energy from the sunlight. So the energy that we are now that is flowing from one pass from one organism to another, that energy is from sun, from the sun. Now the sun is giving energy to the grass. So the grass now is giving energy to the goat. Because if the goat feeds on the grass, now it is transferring the energy of the grass to itself. Now the goat also now will store this energy. And this energy, when the goat is eaten by the hyena, the energy will also transfer to the hyena. This is what we call a food chain. We have different types of food chain or many food chains. Let's look at this one. This one is also saying, right, okay. It says grass to goat and goat to hyena. Here the grass is the producer and the goat is the herbivore while the hyena is the cannibal. Right, let's go back here. This grass, we all know it is a plant. So then we say plants are producers. So the grass is the producer. Right? Then the, the goat here. Animals that feed on plants only are what we call them herbivores. So the goat here is a herbivore. It feeds on only plants. So the hyena is a, is a type of animal that feeds on meat only. So therefore, the hyena here in this food chain is a carnivore because we say carnivore are animals that feed on meat only. So this is the order in which the food chain is going. From producer to a herbivore and from a herbivore to a carnivore. We will look at their order. Another food chain we could have is grass. Grass to grasshopper. Grasshopper to praying mantis. And praying mantis to lizard. To lizard. Now, here is a food chain. The grass is giving energy to the grasshopper. The grasshopper is giving energy to the praying mantis. The praying mantis is giving energy to the lizard. Right. So we say here the grass is the producer. The force on the chain is always a producer. Then the next on the, on the chain is called the force order force order consumer. It is the force order consumer. It is always a herbivore or an omnivore because it is always a, a, it's an animal that feeds on. It is always a herbivore. It is always a herbivore and it could be also a, an omnivore because omnivore feeds on both grass and meat. Right. So this next one is the second order consumer.
The praying mantis here is going to be the second order consumer. Second order consumer. Second order consumers, they are always cannibals. Second order consumers, they are always cannibals. The first one could be an omnivore or a herbivore. But the second order consumer is always a cannibal because it is, a, it is going to be an animal that feeds on meat only. So here, this praying mantis is a cannibal and at the same time, second order consumer. Then, the last one that is the lizard, the, li the lizard is, is the third order consumer. The lizard here is the third order consumer. Third order consumer. Or we can call it tertiary, tertiary consumer. It is either a third order consumer or you call it a tertiary consumer. This is how it is following. The food chain, the grass or the plant is the producer. The grasshopper is the first order consumer or a herbivore or a herbivore and the praying mantis here is the second order consumer the lizard is the third order consumer and the second order consumer also is always cannibal it's a cannibal the third order is also a cannibal This is how we make food chain. This is how we make food chains. We can have another example. Like we can say grass. We can say sheep. We can say lion. Right? So, if you have these three organisms, grass, sheep, and lion, you are asked to put them in a food chain. Your food chain is going to be the producer, which is the grass. The first one is going to be the grass. Put an arrow and so where the grass is going to, the, the energy of the grass going to. Among these animals, what, which of, among them feeds on the grass is the sheep. Then you write sheep. Then you put an arrow again. That arrow is to pointing to where the energy of the ship is going to. The energy of the ship is going to no other organism in this other than the lion. So you can see the grass is eaten by the ship. The ship is eaten by the lion. So the energy of the grass is going to the ship and the energy of the ship, when it is eaten by the lion, it also transfers to the lion. So therefore, if you are to label them in order, we will say grass is the producer. We say the sheep is the herbivore. Or first order consumer. And the lion here is the cannibal, is a cannibal. Or we say it's a cannibal and at the same time second order consumer. Right. So the the food chain goes on and on and on. Right? I think you have now understand how food chains are made. The force on the food chain is always a producer. The second on the food chain is always a herbivore, or sometimes it could be an omnivore, and the third is always a cannibal. Now here, this grass is feeding, is eaten by the sheep. Also, the sheep is also eaten by a lion. The lion here is a cannibal. At the same time, second order consumer. Not so. But here again, if you look at it, it if the lion here could be, um, could be something like this. Grass to sheep, sheep to man. Man taking the place of the lion. When I say man, I mean human being. Now this, sheep is, this grass is the producer still now. 
This ship is the second order, first order consumer still now, and it is a herbivore. Now this lion, now the man is taking place of the lion, which a man is an omnivore. Here the man is an omnivore, right? Here the man is an omnivore. So it is a second order consumer at the same time an omnivore. So the second order consumer I said earlier is it can be an omnivore. It can be an omnivore. It can be an omnivore. Not only time, all the time being a carnivore. But the first order consumer, like I said, is always, uh, that one is a herbivore. That one is a herbivore. Of course, it could be a very short one where you can have an omnivore there, like a man being this first order consumer there. So now this order, it depends on how you bring it, right? So this lion here is a carnivore at the same time, second order consumer. If you bring the man in the place of the lion, then the man is going to be an omnivore and at the same time second order consumer. I think it's now understood. Right. We move to the next one. A habitat such as a forest contains several food chains. Sometimes you can have a place where you have so many food chains interacting. So many food chains interacting or so many animals interacting. For example, in a forest or in a pond. In a, in, in a lake, on, in a, on an island. These are all places where living things, many living things live. So, right, for example, in a forest where you have this type of, many, this type of animals, where you have a snake, where you have frog, where you have mice, where you have grasshopper, Where you have mango tree. Where you have grass. Where you have mud. Praying mantis. These are all organisms and they all need food to in, in order to survive. They are all organisms, living organisms, and they all need to feed in order to survive. The snake, the frog, the maize, the grasshopper, the mango, the grass, the moth, and the praying mantis. They are living together. How do they feed on each other? How do they feed themselves? The question is, how do they feed on themselves? They feed themselves by eating each other. Right, for example, here, our base is always when we are trying to make a food web. Right? When we are trying to make this, a food web, that is all these organisms living together in one area or one place, they need to feed on each other. Right? How do they feed themselves? Now we are going to have our base as always producers. The first, the first producer here is mango tree. We write our mango tree here. Followed by the maize. Maize plant. Followed by the grass. We have our base as this tree. Then there are, now, now the food is going up. So which among these feet feed, feed on, uh, on, on plants? Okay, right here we can say the mud. We can say the mud. We can say the praying mantis. Right? And which also fits on this mud and praying mantis? We can say frog fits on those. Right? We can also say praying mantis. And grasshopper. All right. You have them like this. Now here, we are now looking at where the food comes from and where it goes to. The, 
the mango tree is giving food to the moth and the moth is giving food to the frog the frog is also giving food to the snake the food from is from the mango tree to the moth from the moth to the frog from the frog to the snake now maize is giving food to the grasshopper grasshopper is giving food to the praying mantis the praying mantis also is giving food to the snake. The grass also can give food, is giving food to the grasshopper. The grasshopper is also giving food to the praying mantis. It also gives food to the snake. This grass also can give food to the moth. This maize can give food to the moth. This maize can give food to the grasshopper. And this, okay, this moth not only giving food to the frog, but it can also give food to the praying mantis. The maize gives food to the grasshopper. The grasshopper gives food to the praying mantis, and the praying mantis give food to the snake. The grass can give food to the grasshopper. The grasshopper can give food to the praying mantis, and praying mantis to the snake. So it goes on like that. This is how they depend on each other in terms of their food. So they are living in, a, in they are interchanging their food. So the mango tree does not mean that it's moth only that feeds on it. The mango tree moths can feed on it. Grasshopper can feed on it. The maize can be eaten. Uh, the, the grasshopper can feed on the maize. The maize also can, the moth can also feed on the grasshopper, like the grass also and any other animals this moth and this grass they are the herbivores they can they feed on both the grass they feed on the mango tree they feed on the maize and they feed on the grass this moth and grass they are the, the herbivores the frog can feed on the moth and at the same time can feed on the grasshopper the grass praying mantis can feed on the moth and at the same time the praying mantis can feed on the grasshopper then the top on the, on, the, on, the, on the rank here is the snake, which gets food from all this, but no, or no, or no other animals that feeds on it. This is what we call a food web. Now let's look at their hierarchy. The first, on, the, the first at the bottom is the producer. The plants are the producers. The moth and the grass, they are the first order consumer. First order consumer. Right? Then the frog and the praying mantis, they are the second order consumer. They are the second order consumer. While the snake here is the third order consumer. Third order consumer, or we say tertiary consumer. This is how the, it flows. You have the producer, that's the mango tree, maize, and grass. They are the producers. The moth, the grass, the moth and the grasshopper. They are the first order consumer. The frog and the praying mantis. They are the second order consumer. And the snake is the third order consumer or a tertiary consumer. Now let's see what we have. Right. If you look at it here, it's the same. You have the grass, grass, the maize, and the mango at the base. Then you have moth and the grasshopper. You have the frog and the praying mantis and the snake. Now food is going, giving, the, food, the mango is giving food to the grasshopper. The maize is giving food to the grasshopper. The grass is giving food to the grasshopper. The maize is equally giving food to the moth. And the grass is also giving food to the moth. The moth is giving food to the frog. The frog is giving food to the snake. Now here again you can see the grass is giving food to the frog. The gra so the grasshopper is giving food to the frog. The grasshopper is also giving food to the praying mantis while the praying mantis also is giving food to the snake so this is how they would live how they live in this community 
or in this habitat. Right, now we said the grass, the maize, and the mango, they are the producers. The moth, the grasshopper, the moth and the grasshopper, they are the primary consumers. The frog and the praying mantis, they are the secondary consumers. And the snake is the tertiary consumer. This is how it looks like. Food web is a feeding relationship that involves more than one food chain. If you can see, you have different, so more than one food chain. From mango tree to moth, moth to frog is one food chain. From maize to grasshopper, grasshopper to praying mantis is another food chain. From mango tree to moth, moth to praying mantis is a food chain. Or you say grass to grasshopper, grasshopper to praying mantis, praying mantis to snake is, a food, is another food chain. So a number, several food chains together is what we call a food web. Is what we call a food web. Therefore, each habitat contains several food webs. Right. It says exercise. Draw or make a food web from the following organisms. Draw or make a food web from the following organisms. What are the organisms? They are hyena, tiger, grass, lion, millet, sheep, and goat. If we should have this and we are to make a food, a, a food web here, we are going to say grass being our base. We can say millet also being our base, to be our base. Right, we can say grass and millet. Which, um, which among them feeds on plants? Sheep is one of them. Goat is another one. Then we are left with hyena, tiger, and lion. Hyena, tiger, and lion. We all know lion is the king of the jungle. We can have hyena. We can have tiger. Like this. If you are to make a food web like this, we can give food to the grass. The grass is giving food to the sheep. Is giving food to the goat. The millet is giving food to the sheep. Is giving food to the goat. The goat can give food to the hyena. The goat can give food to the tiger. The sheep can give food to the tiger. The sheep can give food to the hyena. The hyena can give food to the lion. The tiger can also give food to the lion. So this is another food chain that we can make. Right. Then we have assignment. Before we meet once again, I would want you to answer these questions. Number one, give two examples for each of the following. A, primary consumer, B, secondary consumer, and C, producer. You give example of each of the, on each of these. Give me one example, two examples of primary consumer. Give me two examples of secondary consumer and two examples of producers, producers. Then question number two, your number two, the first two, three, and four should be A, B, and C. Then number two, say, name the three categories of consumers. We said earlier on, consumers are put into three categories. You name them for me. Number three, state the category where the butterfly belongs to. What is the category of the butterfly in terms of food? I would, I'm expecting these questions to be answered before we meet once again. So, thank you very much. So, I just want to remind you about COVID-19. It is real. And it's still on. To be on our safe side, let's wash our hands with soap regularly. Stay at home.